Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about our own galaxy the Milky Way and a new study that tries to investigate how many Earth-like planets could we potentially discover in our galaxy in total. So let's discuss this and welcome to What The Math. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is definitely a really huge place. So big as a matter of fact that we're not even sure exactly how many stars there are. We know that the mass is approximately 1.5 trillion masses of the Sun, but this includes the dark matter. So when it comes to the actual number of stars, our estimates um, sort of vary between about 100 billion in total to maybe 400 billion different stars. And each of these stars definitely has various types of planets. Some of them might be really, really hot, some of them might be really cold, and some of them might of course be really small. But we are currently interested in discovering as many Earth-like planets as possible, because we believe that the chance for having extraterrestrial life increases dramatically if we discover a similar planet to our own planet Earth. And for this reason, we need to try to estimate how many Earth-like planets we can discover around somewhat similar stars to our Sun. In other words, if we were to somehow estimate the number of Earth-like planets around similar to Sun um, stars, we could maybe then discover how many Earth-like planets there are in the entire galaxy. So, this new paper that appeared in the Astronomical Journal talks about the occurrence of planets relatively similar in size to Earth around stars that are relatively similar to our Sun. In other words, it approaches things statistically and tries to figure out how many of stars in the vicinity of our own Sun would have necessary conditions to potentially support life and potentially have liquid water. But for this paper, the scientists decided to take a very broad approach and define the Earth-like size as something in between approximately 75% the size of Earth, which is this right here, and this is the actual Earth, and then approximately 150% the size of Earth. So they looked at planets of this size, anywhere between this small to this large, because we assume that you could still have relatively similar conditions to Earth, even if the planet is this big. And the same thing with the actual star. So this would be our own sun right here, but they've also taken a look at the so-called K-type stars, slightly smaller than our sun, and the so-called F-type stars, which are slightly bigger than our Sun. Which is why the title of the paper mentions the FGK stars. FGK is basically the spectrum of the stars that they emit. Our own Sun is known as a G-type star. Um, basically, this is what a G-type star would look like. The K-type star would be something like this. It's a little bit um, less hot than our Sun, even though the star is more massive than the Sun. This is Pollux, it's a star that's very easily visible in the night skies. And then we have uh, more prominent and much brighter and hotter stars known as the F-type stars. This is a star known as Zeta Leonis. So these are a lot brighter and produce a lot more luminosity. But all three types of stars, F, G and K, could technically have planets, unlike this one you see on the screen, that if placed in a certain um, region of the star would possibly have liquid water. Which is why the scientists behind this paper decided to investigate, so how many could we possibly discover statistically if we were to look around our own um, neighborhood? But how could we possibly discover how many various planets uh, we can actually find around us? Well, if we were to just count um, planets we've already discovered using Kepler telescope, unfortunately this would be kind of biased, because for the most part we're going to be um, able to easily see larger planets, and we'll have a lot of these discovered, but some of the smaller planets uh, might be very difficult to see and would go unnoticed. And so in order to discover how many of various planets we can discover around FGK stars, the scientists behind this paper came up with a really clever idea. What they decided to do is instead of just counting Kepler uh, discoveries, and not just Kepler discoveries but also other telescopes as well, which basically brings us to over 4,000 different exoplanets, what they did instead is procedurally generate many, many different universes using computer simulations. And in every single universe, they would uh, try to adjust the number of planets and stars created. 
And for every one of these universes, they imagined that there would be its own Kepler telescope trying to find more exoplanets. And then they tried to see what this particular Kepler discovered and compare it to the actual discoveries we've made here in our own universe. And to make sure that they have a lot of different stars represented and various types of stars, they combined this with the Gaia telescope data that has been tracking stars very accurately. And combining it all together, came up with a relatively accurate number. Or at least a number that's accurate enough for F, G, and K type stars. Now, for these types of stars, or for the stars that are not too different from our sun, they discovered that the chance of having a relatively similar in size to Earth planet in a location that's um, in between about 240 to 500 days in orbit, so roughly in the same region as the habitable zone, the chance for finding such planet around FGK stars was close to about 27%, or approximately 1 in 4 of these stars would have an Earth-like object. And that is a pretty high chance. So in other words, if we were to look around the um, galaxy nearby and look at randomly selected F, G, and K type star, there is a 25% chance that you would have an object not so different from a planet Earth. Now, this is the average approximation, and even if you were to look at the most conservative number they had, or basically the lowest possible chance, it's still pretty high, it's about 3%. So, out of about 100 or so stars near us that are F, G, or K, we would find about 3 or so terrestrial, or not terrestrial, but Earth-sized planets in the region that's about not so different from the region that we refer to as the habitable zone. And so if uh, we look at all of these chances and then try to combine all of this with the total number of stars in the galaxy, we can estimate how many of Earth-like planets, or, okay, I keep saying Earth-like, how many Earth-sized planets in the relatively similar region we can discover across the entire galaxy. So let's do a little bit of speculation here and a little bit of math. So we know that the average chance to discover a similar in size to Earth planet is about 1 in 4. We also know that on the lower spectrum, the number of total stars in our galaxy is about 100 billion. But not all of these stars are FGK type. We're going to ignore the most common type of a star, like for example our closest neighbor, these are the M type stars, these are the so-called red dwarfs. We have a really, really bad feeling about these stars because chances of finding um, a somewhat habitable planet around them is currently really, really low. So we're ignoring these. We're also ignoring the larger type stars, like O-type stars, that are the brightest stars in the night skies, because they're too energetic. So we're only taking a look at stars that are similar to our sun. So this is definitely out, and all of these are out as well. We know that of all of these three types, K-type is the most prominent, it's the most common type of a star in the galaxy, with G-type being the second most prominent and the F-type being, I guess you could call it the rarest type. There are roughly around 12% of these types of stars in our galaxy. There are also about 7.5% of G-type and about 3% of all nearby stars are the F-type. So if you were to combine these percentages together, you get about 20%. So of all of these stars in our galaxy, if you were to look around and count all of them, although that would be really, really challenging, statistically you would discover about 1 in 5 to be FGK type. And inside of those stars, 1 in 4 will have an Earth-like planet. Which brings us to the total number of Earth-like or Earth-sized planets to be anywhere from about 5 billion to 10 billion in total, assuming that there are 100 to 200 billion stars in the galaxy. That is a pretty big number. That's basically a single Earth-sized planet for every person here on Earth. But that's of course assuming the average statistical parameters. If we go for the most conservative number, or essentially for um, the numbers they presented in the paper, which is about 3%, and also uh, look at the lowest number of assumed stars in our galaxy, the total number decreases quite dramatically, and the total number of Earth-sized planets decreases to about 600 million in total in the entire galaxy. That's about 1 out of 165 stars we look at. Now, that's nevertheless a really, really big number. That's kind of like saying if we were to fly around the galaxy, and if we were to look at about 
200 different stars, we'll discover at least one of these stars with a planet that's very similar in size to Earth in the position where it could have, well, technically habitable conditions, but possibly liquid water. So the chance for us to find Earth 2.0 because of this paper have dramatically increased. And this will also definitely create a lot of excitement once we discover an Earth-like planet around one of these FGK type stars in the near future. And so whether there are about 600 million of similar planets out there in the galaxy, which is the lowest estimate, to about 10 billion, which is the average estimate, it still gives us a really, really high chance of discovering more similar planets and the chance of discovering something very, very similar to Earth with actual liquid water, with actual atmosphere and possibly even breathable atmosphere is now somewhat high. It's surprisingly high. But don't forget that the galaxy is still a very, very, very large place. The nearest star to us is only 4 light years away, but some of the farther stars are up to about 100,000 light years away. It will be very, very difficult for us to get there with current technology. So this just means that we need to start looking a little bit harder, but we also need to start thinking about some sort of a technology that can take us to those stars and to those planets. And unfortunately, until we discover new technologies to take us really far, really fast, or find another way of getting to these planets, we're going to be stuck here. Well, not here, this is the moon. Here in the solar system. But anyway, we do have hopes and we do have a lot of passion, so one day I'm sure we'll get there. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences through simulations and video games, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.